So guys, in this personal video I'm going to show you the difference between a motor circuit breaker and a thermal relay, that is, we have two devices to protect the motor, but which one to use. And also explain how to connect the thermal relay and the motor circuit breaker with power and command diagram. Basically folks, when the motor circuit breaker is used in the circuit it will already protect against short circuit and motor overload, replacing the thermal relay and the miniature circuit breaker, MCB. The thermal relay only protects the motor against overload, so when we use the thermal relay in the circuit it is necessary to use a miniature circuit breaker, MCB, 3-pole for protection against short circuit, this miniature circuit breaker, MCB, 3-pole will protect the conductors and circuit components against short circuit. Now with the motor circuit breaker we already have protection against short circuit and against overload on the motor and, as with the thermal relay, on the motor circuit breaker you also have the option to adjust the current for thermal protection against overload. A disadvantage of the motor circuit breaker in relation to the thermal relay is that in the motor circuit breaker we do not have auxiliary contacts. Whereas in the thermal relay we already have the normally closed contact 95 and 96 to use in the control part of the circuit to turn off the motor when there is an overload and the normally open contact 97 and 98 used to be able to install a signal lamp to indicate an overload fault in the motor. In order to have the auxiliary contacts on the motor circuit breaker, it is necessary to install an auxiliary contact block. Let's connect the circuit with the motor circuit breaker and the thermal relay so that we can better understand how the two devices work. Then we connect the three phases on the miniature circuit breaker, MCB, three pole and on the motor circuit breaker. We leave with these three phases of the MCB and the motor circuit breaker and connect them to terminals 1, 3 and 5 of the contactor. In the circuit that has the thermal relay, we leave with the three phases of terminals 2, 4 and 6 of the thermal relay and connect it to the motor and in the circuit that has the motor circuit breaker, we connect terminals 2, 4 and 6 of the contactor to the motor. We can already see that in the circuit we have the motor circuit breaker, the miniature circuit breaker, MCB, 3-pole and the thermal relay was not used, as I said earlier, the motor circuit breaker replaced the miniature circuit breaker, MCB, and the thermal relay. Another personal thing is the motor circuit breaker symbol on the power diagram, which is different from the miniature circuit breaker, MCB, 3-pole symbol. On the motor circuit breaker we have the symbol for short circuit protection and the symbol for adjustable thermal overload protection. Now let's power the contactor coil. We connect one phase to the miniature circuit breaker, MCB, one pole and the direct neutral conductor to A2 of the contactor. The phase conductor that we leave from the MCB, one pole we connect to A1. Now let's understand how the thermal relay and the motor circuit breaker work. When the circuit is on, note in the diagram that the motor circuit breaker contacts are closed, but if there is an overload in the motor, the motor circuit breaker itself will identify this overload and will open the power contacts and turn off the motor. With the thermal relay it is already different, because the power contacts of the thermal relay do not open like the motor circuit breaker. The power contacts of the thermal relay are only connected to the contactor, so personnel must use the auxiliary contacts of the thermal relay to be able to turn off the motor when there is an overload. So let's take one of the phases that connects to the contactor coil and let's connect it to the normally closed contact of the thermal relay. Thermal relay terminal 95 is the normally closed contact input and terminal 96 is the output. We took this phase that we connected directly to A1 of the contactor and connected it to 95 of the thermal relay and left this phase to 96 and connected it to A1 of the contactor. 
Now we can see in the command diagram that we have the normally closed contact of the thermal relay in series with the contactor coil and if there is an overload, this normally closed contact will open and will interrupt the energy of the contactor coil and will turn off the motor. Guys, when we use the thermal relay to protect the motor, we have indirect protection, that means that the thermal relay does not open the power contacts when there is an overload, so it is necessary to use a contactor, because this way we place the contact normally closed 95 and 96 of the thermal relay in series with the contactor coil and the contactor that will open the power contacts to switch off the motor. Now with the motor circuit breaker the protection is already direct, because the power contacts of the motor circuit breaker will open to turn off the motor in case of an overload. Only with the personal motor circuit breaker can it be connected directly to the motor, because in addition to serving as a protection device, the motor circuit breaker is also used as a switching device, that is, it is used to manually start and stop a motor. However, the motor circuit breaker is used together with the contactor to be able to install buttons to be able to turn the motor on and off and it is better to use the contactor to be able to turn the motor on and off because the contactor has a much longer mechanical and electrical durability than the motor circuit breaker. In this circuit that we have, the personal motor circuit breaker has a very interesting detail, which is the activation of the contactor because when an overload occurs, the motor circuit breaker will open the contacts and turn off the motor, but the contactor will remain on because the contactor coil it is directly connected, that is. The power circuit will be without energy because the motor circuit breaker contacts will be open and the motor will be off, but the contactor coil will be on. The circuit is already protected, there is no power to the motor, only the contactor is activated. To be able to turn off the contactor together with the motor circuit breaker, we have to install an auxiliary contact block on the motor circuit breaker and place the normally open contact of this auxiliary block in series with one of the phases of the contactor coil. Now look at the power and command diagram of the motor circuit breaker. When the motor circuit breaker closes the contacts, the auxiliary contact also closes and drives the contactor coil and when the motor circuit breaker contacts open, the auxiliary contact also opens and turns off the contactor and the motor. In these two circuits now folks, just install the buttons on the contactor to be able to turn the motor on and off by making the contact holding the contactor. We have other videos teaching how to do it and what to contact by holding the contactor, I'll leave the link here in the video description. Comment below in the video what you think of this comparison of the motor circuit breaker and the personal thermal relay, like the video because it is very important here for the channel and subscribe if you haven't already, thank you very much for watching and until next time video.